How often do you listen to the advice on Sleeper slash Yahoo apps? Babe, how often do you listen? I listen a lot more than probably most people. I think a lot of times I'll just put, if, especially if I'm like, oh, I don't know, who should I play? I just do whoever's going to be projected more points. Where I get in trouble a lot of times is when I try to get cute and look at the matchups and just think, well, yeah, they scored three points last week, but look at their matchup this week. They're going to do much better, da, 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 and then they don't. So I just try to listen to the projections most of the time, especially if I'm very unsure on what to do. So I listen to the advice a lot. <laughs> Not saying that you shouldn't consider like other outside factors, but I mean, someone's getting paid to do that, so they know more than I do. I promise. <laughs> Except That's for when fair. they rank some people way higher than they should be, I'm questioning the people who sit there and rank players on the sleeper app, especially tight ends. Why are we ranking them that way? That is all. <laughs> Do you listen to the I, I definitely like to – I like the <laughs> shotgun approach when it comes to any kind of rankings from any single source. I never rely on a single source. Uh, there are lots of great fantasy, uh, you know, shows, and you're watching one, um, and so experts cool. and analysts who get paid to do this stuff. I definitely like to look at what everybody's saying – because generally there are more outliers than consensus. Um, and if there is a consensus, then it's, it's a pretty solid play going forward, but you also have to look at why there's a consensus and then formulate your own opinion based on that coaching staff, that organization, uh, that single player. Um, I would definitely get as much information as you possibly can from as many different sources as you possibly can. I will say, like, the one thing, like, if you're going to go pick up people on the waiver wires and you're going off those projection points, I would be careful because sometimes those are, like, yeah, like, Smaje was projected to score a lot, but I don't know. He's not worth, like, dropping someone on your bench if you didn't need him for more than a week because now he's down to being projected, like, five points a game again. But sometimes when I go on the waivers, I'm like, geez, I'm not going to pick this guy up. I don't care that he's projected that much. He's not that good at least for, like, long-term, maybe for, like, one week. but Or if someone has a really, really good week, they all of a sudden jump up the waivers. But I would more look at what are they consistently doing, like if you pull up their game log and see how many points they've scored a game instead of just looking at what they're projected for that week. Because someone – I mean, a lot of those, especially, like, running backs, have, like, one good game. They shoot all the way to the top of the waiver, and it's like, uh, they're not that good. So that's the only time I look at project- – I don't really look at projections too much yeah and a lot of time when somebody shoots to the top of waivers like that it's usually because <clears throat> we all drafted at the beginning of the season players get hurt mm-hmm. players underperform overperform so being able to snag those players um mid-season is gen- generally what's going to win and or lose leagues uh, and, yes, I agree. I, I think people get way overhyped on a lot of these guys. Uh, so use your best judgment. Thanks for watching. If you like that clip, be sure to check out the other great content from the Let's Talk Football community. And as always, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when more great content like this becomes available.